now. Welcome everyone, the force is strong in here this evening. Fantastic. I'm Warren Davis and I'm very proud to be here as your host at Galactic Night. Shall we have a good time? Yeah. Now, I suspect, I, I suspect we may have a few Star Wars fans in the building, am I right? <laughs> Then, uh, then you may well recognise me as perhaps as Wald or Weasel from The Phantom Menace, or maybe even uh, Wolverine from The Force Awakens, or perhaps Weetie Shyabee from Rogue One. Yeah. Look at that, a face only a mother could love. <laughs> or maybe even Wicked the Ewok from yeah. Attack. Look at him, he's going to give those porgs a run for their money. <laughs> And, you know, it's such a pleasure for me to be a part of the Star Wars universe. And, uh, that's been going on for me now for 36 years. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. I look so young as well. Um, and, uh, and tonight, we're going to hear some very exciting news about the future of Star Wars. Are you ready to go inside the galaxy's edge? I'm very excited to find out about what this brand new world of Batu has to offer. Um, you know, I'm thinking back to when I was a kid, when I was first introduced to Star Wars. And I was just seven years old, and I remember seeing the movie and then going home and recreating scenes with my Star Wars figures and seeing the world, immersing myself in that world through my figures. And, uh, and then when I was 11 years old, I was cast in Return of the Jedi. And then I was able to play on the sets, battle stormtroopers, and kind of consider the possibilities of a real live Star Wars experience. Uh, but then the director said cut, and it was all over. But on Batu, no one's going to say cut. It's a fully immersive world somewhere on the galaxy's edge. And uh, personally, I can't wait to experience it. How about you guys? Yeah. Well, I think it's about time we learn a little bit more from the architects of that world. And to help us do that, please welcome Mr. David Collins. Yeah. All right, David, nice to see you. Great to see you. Well, uh, we're all very excited to learn more about, uh, about the, uh, the Humber project that's going on here, this galaxy's edge. I cannot wait. I, I actually am just so excited to uh, on behalf of the audience, ask questions of all of the masters at work who are bringing Galaxy's Edge to us in 2019. Yeah. And you know, like you, I've just been a Star Wars fan all of my life. How many of you have been a Star Wars fan just forever? <laughs> I really relate to that story, and I can't wait to actually get to go to that galaxy far, far away. Absolutely, and, uh, and this is a great event as well. I'm having such fun at Galactic Nights. You enjoying yourselves here? Uh, earlier on, I had a, a, a lightsaber duel with with a, with a couple of, uh, of young Jedi's, and uh, we dueled with uh, what are these called? Chorizos? Is that Churros. Right? Churros. That's right. Churros. I've never actually eaten one, but let alone sort of had a fight with one before. Uh, and it's fantastic because if you lose, you can just eat the weapon, and it's, it all seems all right. Um, so that's what I've been doing. But I, I tell you what, I'd love to stay and chat and watch this show, but I've got to go and prepare the big finale. Big finale. The Galactic Spectacular. Galactic Spectacular. Yeah, all of you are invited. It happens right in the middle of the park, uh, but I've got to go and prepare a few surprises for that. So uh, I can leave you now. See it, I, well, you'll see us all there. Absolutely. Yeah, so check it out. Uh, Warwick Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Warwick. Like you said, my name is David Collins, and for the next 30 minutes, I'll be your host, asking questions on your behalf of people from Lucasfilm and Walt Disney Imagineering, all about Star Wars. Galaxy's Edge, which is coming right here to Walt Disney World's Hollywood Studios in 2019, and of course to Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Are you guys excited? Yeah. I am so excited. You know, I've been lucky enough to work on Star Wars for the better part of the last 20 years as a sound designer, a voice actor, but I have loved, as I said, Star Wars all of my life. It is so important to me, just like Warren Davis, just like our panelists, right? Um, you know, <laughs> I, I remember being in college and finishing my schoolwork as fast as I could so I could pick up that Timothy Zahn novel and keep going and reading about Thrawn. Or playing my roommate's uh, PC so I could finish X-Wing. Or running all over town to get the latest Power of the Force figure. I mean, I was just so obsessed, and I still am to this day, which is why I'm here asking questions on your behalf. Uh, and my friends would ask me, you're so... 
you're so into Star Wars, would you ever get tired of it? And I said, no, of course I'm not going to get tired of it. In fact, I could walk on the Death Star right now and I would not get tired of it. I could fly the Millennium Falcon and still not grow tired of Star Wars. And it's just so hard to believe that what we're learning about tonight is our collective opportunity to do just that right here in 2019. So please join me in welcoming from uh, Lucasfilm and Walt Disney Imagineering, Doug, Scott, Chris, and Robin. Our best. and learn more about Galaxy's Edge. But first, can you please, each of you introduce yourselves so we know who you are and what your role is on the project. Uh, I'll go first. Hi, I'm Chris Beatty. I'm Executive Creative Director at Walt Disney Imagineering. Um, and my role in the project really is to uh, kind of help craft the overall vision for what the planet Batu will look like and bring all those details to life. Uh, I'm Doug Chang. I'm head of the Lucasfilm Art Department. Woo! And, <laughs> 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 and I do a job of actually overseeing Star Wars designs for all of our franchise. And that means feature films, TV, as well as theme parks, and video games, and in, even uh, new media projects. I'm Robin Gruden. I'm the executive producer for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And my job on the project is while we are creating a reality that is from another world, I have to keep one foot in this world. <laughs> to make it all happen. Now, you shared an interesting story earlier about uh, your history with this park as well. I started my career on the team that opened Disney's Hollywood Studios. <laughs> and it's built to last. Um, so I'm very excited to be working on this project that is going to be the next generation of great for Disney's Hollywood Studios. Sure. And I'm Scott Trowbridge, and I, uh, I spend my days trying to figure out how to bring Star Wars to life uh, in Disney parks and resorts around the globe and on our cruise lines and everywhere uh, we can bring Star Wars storytelling to all of you, the fans. I am so honored to be sitting here with all of you. Such immense talent on stage and such passion. You know, I was lucky enough, I didn't get a chance to share this with you earlier, but I was lucky enough to actually come and visit uh, Imagineering a couple of times. It was yes. it was the most wonderful torture. I sign this piece of paper, you can't say anything, and then they show me uh, the model, and I pour over the model, and they show me the art, and they tell me what I can expect, and I even get a little sneak peek of, of the experiences. And I remember saying to you, well, can I take pictures of, and I know, the, I remember the answer, nothing. Can I take a picture of anything? But can I just take a little picture no. of the model? I mean, you're going to no, show it in 2023. No, can't take a picture of that, not until it's done, not until it's done. No just pictures. Just one, just one. I just want to take one picture. We should let you take one picture. They let me take a picture of the conference room. <laughs> that was it. But look at this conference room. It's like the most awesome conference room. If you have a Star Destroyer conference room, if you have a yard sale, let me know. I'll know where I put it, but I'll make it for it or something. Yeah, we, we can't get it out of the room. <laughs> we can build theme parks and amazing attractions, but we can't figure out how to get a table out of the room. So, you know, it's going to be there for a while. It's just what a magical place Imagineering was. And, and uh, for those that haven't heard about Batu and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, can you get us up to speed a little bit? Absolutely. So just over two years ago, we announced that we were going to build um, two immersive Star Wars themed lands, one right here in Disney Hollywood Studios and the other one out of Disneyland Park in Anaheim. And at that time, we announced that these were going to be, I think appropriately, the largest land expansions that we have ever built anywhere inside the company. But I think it's appropriate because it's Star Wars, right? We should go big, right? Right? Yeah. So, so we did go big. We are going big, right? And we decided to build a whole planet, in fact, the planet Batu, as you mentioned, which is, although it may be new to us, it is absolutely not new to some of our favorite Star Wars characters, because this remote frontier outpost somewhere on the edge of wild space, it is a great stepping off point for, for adventurers, for, for smugglers, for rogue traders, and then ultimately for us. Basically all the interesting and cool people like us, this is going to be the stepping off point for our adventure. So, you know, because we want it to be your story, we want it to be a place for you to discover your story, um, we have to make sure we, we're doubling down on all the, the detail and that sense of immersion, that sense of authenticity. Wait, wait, wait. Is that a drinking fountain with a Dianoga in it? Look, we got some hygiene issues we got to work out. Right. But, but yes. <laughs> but that's, I think, a great example. You know, so it has a filter. 
Yeah. Oh, good, good. And it's got that lived in, that lived in Star Wars look is all part of the magic. Right? And, and there needs to be like that sense of discovery and mystery, and you don't know what's around the next corner and surprise, right? Because that's what makes Star Wars Star Wars is that sense of you know that level of detail and sense of immersion. And you know, it's not just what you see in the places you go, but it's also in everything. Because for the first time, we're going to be able to experience Star Wars with all of our senses. So. What does it smell like? What does it taste like? You know, what is it? What are the textures of things? What do they feel like? You know, for the first time, we're going to really be able to activate all your senses and, and, and really pull you into that Star Wars universe. Wow. We have some people here in the front row that are waiting to write for me. Active fans going on here. There's lots of there's enthusiasm out there. That's awesome. <laughs> That's well, awesome. You guys are the reason we're doing this. So hopefully you 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 hopefully we're doing the right thing by you. Right. And it's not just about exploring this planet, but there are some epic experiences that are going to be part of this experience, right? You talked about wanting to go onto the, the deck of a, of a Death Star, fly the Millennium Falcon, and yes. see if you still really love Star Wars. Well, we're going to put that to the test, because we're going to give you that opportunity. In fact, maybe we're going to force you onto the deck of this Star Destroyer. No pun intended. No pun intended, but... Who hasn't wanted to be uh, find themselves at the mercy of the First Order on a Star Destroyer? I think that's a weird thing to ask. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's going to be awesome. I promise you it's going to be a good time. I want to be in Star Wars. I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. And you you know, you know, said you wanted to go on to the Millennium Falcon. We're going to yes. give you that opportunity, too, because that's one of my favorite ships in the entire galaxy. Some people think of it as a hunk of garbage. I think of it as the fastest ship in the universe. It is. And we're going to give you that chance to not just go on it, but to fly it. So, so not only do you get to go on and experience the Millennium Falcon, but you get to be the captain and pilot the ship. Yeah, I don't and be in the cockpit. Look at that cockpit art. Yes, and I don't mean fly on it. I mean you're flying it, or you're operating the controls, or you're keeping the ship up and you know flying. It's you are truly, truly at the controls. What happens on this adventure is completely and entirely up to you. Wow. I, just, I want you to be gentle. Now. I want you to be gentle. No promises. Okay, that's fine. No promises. I, want, I cannot wait to see this. Robin, can you tell us where we're at uh, this week? Like, where, how, how's it going? How's the construction going? Where's the, pro the project at? Has anybody, you see the construction fences over there? Has anybody tried to peek over? <laughs> Sit on, on somebody's shoulder. It's not safe. Um, there's, there's actually a lot of activity going on. We, we walked the site today. It's really exciting. I think we've got some images. Um, this wasn't from today, but this is from a week ago of what's happening beyond that fence. Um, it's really exciting. The steel is going up. Um, it's taking shape really quickly. That's big. Uh, That's it's huge. big. Um, we, we're building one of these in Anaheim as well. Um, we were, Chris and I were just out in Anaheim last week, um, and we're we're out on the site, we were looking at some stuff, we were checking out some things, we had to run back to some meetings. We came back in the afternoon and a wall was up that wasn't there when we were there this morning. And we thought, well, okay, <laughs> time is a ticket, we're, things are moving along. So um, that's the pace that it has to happen to be ready for all of you in 2019. But it's, it's like Christmas for us right now, because every time we go out on site, there's something new. And there's new, you know, artisans are starting to appear and they're out there working and carving the rock work and really bringing this land to life that we just, you know, we've just visually seen it on paper for the past uh, several years working with Doug and his team. And so now we actually get, like Robin said, every day we go out there and, and you're like, oh, that, that's what that looks like. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's like, hey. Speaking of, of on paper for the last several years, I mean, the design of this park is so unique because I, I don't know about any of you, but when I first heard about a new Star Wars expansion coming to Disney parks, I thought, oh, wow, that's great. I'll go over to Tatooine and watch a pod race. Now, then I'll be able to go to Hoth and buy an ice cream cone, or, or my kid will be able to play the Jungle Gym of Endor or something like that. It's like, just kind of like best of Star Wars sort of thing. But that's not what you're doing at all. You're building a real place. You're actually bringing the, the, the galaxy's edge to us to explore. How did that come about? What were some of the thoughts behind that? Uh, Robin Doug? Yeah. No, that's actually interesting because, you know, the, the world that we create for Star Wars actually reflect the character. They, they, they mirror the characters. And if you think about them, you look at um, Luke Skywalker, for example. Um, he, <laughs> in the New Hope, I mean, he's a simple farmer. He, he's a moisture farmer. And he longs for adventure. But he's living on this very sort of desolate place. And he, he's kind of, it's a boring world. It's a mundane lifestyle. And so Tatooine is bleak. The landscape is bleak to reflect that loneliness. Uh, it's a place that he wants to escape. And likewise, when we were designing uh, Vader's Castle for World One, 
Uh, we argued what the other way. We wanted to make a big statement. You know, it was like Vader was invading this place, so his castle was built like a stake in the ground, um, and we wanted to make it very threatening as well. And so what we did was we just put you know storm clouds in the sky. We had fumes from the lava fields, and it all gave this very visceral feeling of impending doom. Anything on this planet can kill you at any moment, just like Vader. <laughs> and like Vader, who channels the dark side of the uh, force, we wanted the castle to actually help that out. And so it's designed like a tuning fork, and it actually tunes and amplifies the dark energy for Vader. Um, we also went as so far as like, you know, even the form language outside the castle itself, in the lava dams, you'll notice that those lava fins look like teeth. They're very aggressive. And it's, it's all to kind of help reinforce that character that this is a very dangerous place. Uh, and we did the same thing, we went even further, uh, where we took ideas from his costumes and used them as reference for architectural details inside. And if you'll notice in the film, Vader's chamber, the doorway itself, actually mirrors the shape of Vader's mouth from his mask. And it's one of those things that, you know, overall, we always strive to create um, designs that mirror the characters, to create powerful places that then help tell the stories. Yeah, and that's actually what we're doing with Batu as well. Because we're, we're taking the, that same idea about building places and making places um, that are iconic to the characters or to the stories they're in, to the experiences they're having, and doing that with Batu. But this time, the characters that we're actually paying attention to and focusing on are the new protagonists of these stories. All of us, all us. of you guys. Yeah, right. So Batu is a place that is, it, it is filled with opportunities to discover, opportunities to find surprise. It's comfortable yet mysterious. It is a, a great stepping off point for, for these new adventures we're gonna have. And that's why the planet is designed the way it is. So the, the, the environment is a reflection of the characters, and in the case of Batu, the characters are us, the, the guests. That's right. You're, you guys are the heroes. There are stories. Of these new Star Wars stories. Right. Now, you're going to see some favorite friends along the way, right? Sure. Some characters that we know and love or know and hate. Um, but, you know, so these characters are going to be there, but this time, you're in the story with them. Wow. Wow, but that, it's, it's so inspiring to hear you talk about production design. And actually, it made me uh, think of a question that I had for you, which is describing the difference, if you could, uh, between production design for a film, which is a very different set of, of uh, requirements, versus a theme park, which we can explore. And, and like we do as, as guests, we obsessively look at every little detail. Can you talk about uh, the differences there? Yeah, no, it's actually interesting, because whether you're designing for a film or a theme park, the process is exactly the same. The main difference, though, is the final product, the final construction. When we design for a film, though, it's always to a very specific point of view, and that's the point of view of the camera. And so that allows us to cheat, because we're creating an illusion of reality. Like in this image here, this is, uh, you may remember, this is our partial set build of the U-Wing from Rogue One. And we only build just what is necessary to create that illusion. And by doing that, it, we really can take a lot of cheats out of it. Um, the next image you'll see is our Yavin hangar, again from Rogue One. And you'll notice that from this angle, it looks absolutely real. And that's because it's dressed and meticulously detailed, painted, and lit to look real from here. But in the next image, you'll notice that it's fake. I mean, you, you know, obviously it's a movie set. You'll see our lighting rigs. You'll notice that the walls aren't really walls, they're just facades. You'll notice that the rocks aren't really rocks, they're just painted foam. And one of the wonderful things about film design is that they're meant to be temporary. And that's because the sets only have to exist for the weeks or the months that it takes to shoot. Um, so the details don't have to be real. Uh, one of the fun things that we also try to do is that sometimes we don't build anything. We actually just paint them on a plywood just to help that illusion along. And so cinematic construction is really about the illusion of reality. Um, park construction, however, is completely different. It's completely real. It's completely immersive. The, the buildings that you'll see are absolutely realistic. I mean, the, the, the construction methods are real uh, construction methods. We'll be using real stone. The steel's real steel. Um, so nothing about it will be fake. I mean, in fact, you can actually walk around, see what's around the corner. You can see what's behind that door, or what's in that room, or even look underneath the table. So no detail is too small for us. I remember, Doug, when Chris and I went actually to this set, and we, we saw those, those X-Wings, we were like, oh my god! <laughs> I just got it like running, oh, it's incredible! And then we get up to them like, what the camera captures in that 2D image, right? Yes. Yeah, versus this is a 3D, but it's, yeah. it is incredible. I mean, well, 
speaking of X-Wings, I mean, we're going to build a whole fleet of X-Wings for the parks. And it's, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 <laughs> wait, say that one more time? Yeah, we are going to build a set of real X-Wings for the park. I think you yeah. said yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. real X-Wings for the park. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is a new image. We've never seen this before. Yeah, and what's really powerful is that, you know, if we've built X-Wings for the films, and they're always props. They're made out of you know fiberglass and wood and painted foam. The versions that you'll see in the park are the real deal. They're actually made out of quarter-inch steel over a metal framework, just like a real aircraft. And when you knock on it, it's going to feel solid and it's going to feel real because they are real. I mean, in some ways, I like to think that you know all we have to do is just mount a real engine on them and they'll fly. Uh, so our X-wings will look exactly like the ones in the film, except they're constructed to be absolutely real. For example, sometimes we'll cheat and we'll put fake details on it to give the impression of reality. Every detail, every nut, every bolt on the X-wings that you'll see in parks are absolutely real. The latches will be real. We even went so far as to actually give you real graphics. All the painted graphics on there actually say something. They're not just for decoration. Um, and, and so, well, so, if I walk up to an X-Wing and I'm climbing the ladder, I don't know if you're going to let me do this, you probably would never let me do this. Just be like, careful. But let's just say, if, if, yeah, okay. But it, there's going to be a little warning, like, do not slip on this ladder, but like in Arabesh. Is that yes, what you're saying? Exactly. If you can read Arabesh, you'll actually be able to translate it and see what you're supposed to do or not to do. It's really fantastic. And what's even better is, just recently, I had a chance to check in on the Falcon as it's being refurbished for us. And it is absolutely stunning. You know, as you know, in our films, you guys have... know what the Millennium Falcon is, right? <laughs> okay. As you know, I mean, in this image, in our films, we built many different versions, and I think you know, there's probably more than six. We built several full-size versions. We had a six-foot shooting miniature as well as a two-inch shooting miniature, plus some digital versions. The version that you're going to see in the park is the definitive one, because the versions that we did for film were all slightly different because they were built for different purposes. But the one that you're going to actually see in the park is the one. It's the real deal. And what was amazing for me was that standing there in front of it, I, mean, I was awestruck. And I just can't wait for you guys to have that same experience. There she is. And this is actually, no one's actually seen this image before. You guys, the, tonight's the first night we're showing this. Just a sneak peek of the way it's all film. Robin, it looks like we have a little work yeah, to do. Yeah, a little yeah, so. No, 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 no leave it. Missed, missed a spot. Yeah, <laughs> some blaster scorching there. So, Robin, when you hear Doug talk about all of these details and bringing them to life, and it's real, it's real, it's real, what does that mean for you, bringing that to life in the real world? Well, it, it, it's interesting having started on this park, as I mentioned before, which was about the magic of the movies. And so, I'm familiar with the, you know, just where the camera sees, but but you as our fans and as the guests, um, we tend to turn around and, and look at everything. And so part of our challenge in theme parks has always been about making that real and making it 360. And one of the first attractions I worked on here was the great movie ride, which took you into the movies. This <laughs> I, I have to deliver it every time because it just it gives me a kick. Um, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will, will take you into the movies in a way that we've never done before. You are, Doug was talking about the Falcon. We're building the Falcon. It, the Falcon is here where she's getting refurbished. She's gonna be here. You are gonna be inside the Falcon. You're gonna be inside those hallways. I think we have some images where, again, this is where- That's not a movie set. That's not the movie set. That's where you're gonna be. Those are the real hallways that are on the way to the cockpit where you can pilot the Falcon on a mission. Uh, so and that's also, that's the real That's cockpit. the real cockpit, where you're gonna be, you are the flight crew. So you can pilot, you'll be, you'll be taking care of the systems, you'll be, uh, there'll be a mission that you're trying to accomplish. Hopefully it'll go well. Uh, <laughs> because other people might wanna see the Falcon again. Doug might have some use for it later in another movie, so you know, we don't again, want things David, to go David. badly. I'm sorry, I, I make no promises. Right. I make no promises. You know, but but you can't just take the Falcon and you know go flying around the parking lot or something. So we had to we have to go somewhere. And so we are in there's a there's a new adventure, um, many adventures, but one of them, I think we have an image here that we've been working with Doug. Yeah. Um, this one looks like it might not go well, um, but that's really up to you because the ending of this is, is up to the, how good your flight crew is. This is not gonna go 
the way you think. <laughs> now this is not Batu, this is a completely different this part of the This is a completely different. So this, you're, you're actually going to leave Batu. You leave Batu and go Well, it's kind of up to you again. Okay, you're, in, you're in command of the ship. What you, how, how you... How you treat it, where you go, do you fulfill the mission you've been given? That's kind of completely up to you. And right, you but I'm like Rex. It's my first time flying too, so I don't really know if it's going to go that well. Well, then well, the we should on, make a spare. The people on there with you really hope it does. Okay, well, I'm counting on you guys. <laughs> that is just, it's just incredible. And now, it's not just about the vehicles though, right? It's not just about the fleet of X-Wings, which is amazing. The Millennium Falcon, having her there on the two, incredible. But there's so much to do that you guys shared with me when I went to Imagineering. Chris, can you just talk about all of the detail that you're putting into the actual port itself? Absolutely. I, what's exciting is, I mean, you heard Scott talk about, you know, walking through the land and, and what you see, what you smell, what you, you know, what's the, what's the texture of the world that you're, uh, that we're creating. And um, a lot of that just goes into research, right? And, and you know, the, the storytelling that Imaginary and Lucasfilm, you know, we take great pride in. And so, you know, what's amazing about this project, and this, uh, you know, I'm going to go off tangent here for a second. But what's incredible, about me personally, is getting to work with Doug Chang and the team up at Lucasfilm. Um, they are incredible. <laughs> just, just so you understand, this project is not just being designed by Imagineers in isolation. We aren't just off on our own, coming kind of what we think Star Wars is like. From day one, we partnered with Doug and the story team to craft this, you know, visually where we want to take you as guests, right? Um, and we couldn't do it without them. That partnership has just been incredible, it's just incredible. Um, but out of that, you know, we spend a lot of time together just asking that question, where do we, where do we want you to go? What's it feel like? What's it smell like? What do I hear um, when I walk through, walk through Batu? Um, so we knew early on we wanted this place to be romantic and to have an ancient history, to be exotic, to be a little mysterious, a little dangerous, right? That you may not know when you turn a corner, you may know what's going to happen to you, right? There's a, you know, there's a sense of, you know, there's tension in the air. Um, that's exciting. But at the same time, Scott always says this almost at every one of our brainstorm sessions. He goes, I know it, guys. I know you want it to be a little dangerous, but it's got to be fun. And I think when you really look at Star Wars, um, you know, that's really, I think, what makes it amazing and a lot of fun as an adventure is, yeah, there, you know, it is a swashbuckling, you know, sort of romp through space, but man, I tell you, at the end of the day, there's always great comedy and humor in it um, that just gives it life. Um, so we want to make sure our land feels the same. So as we were having these conversations, we started circling a couple places on the map, because we like to take trips, um, as Robin would tell you. Um, as creative directors, we love to take our research trips all over the world. And Robin they loves filling out these trips. They work really hard. <laughs> and we do. But these trips are important because we'll go to these places and we'll, you know, we'll take tons of photographs, we'll take tons of notes, and we come back and it, they, you know, they really are the, it really builds the, the basis for the design team to start their work. But we looked at Istanbul and Morocco. Those were the two places that we thought ancient, ancient space ports. They've been around for thousands of years. You know, they've got, you know, great history and they're romantic. Um, those are the two places we thought were, were good bases to do some research. So we went there. And then in Morocco, we found these amazing markets filled with artisans and, uh, you know, just amazing color and, you know, the fabric, the textiles and the, you know, the smells. And it was just an incredible um, journey of the senses, really. And um, what it really did was jumpstart conversation every night at the dinner table to say, wow, if we could just get that feeling, that, that you, you know, that artisan kind of, you know, romantic quality to Batu, that's what we're going for. So when we came back, we met with our merchandise team, we met with our food and beverage team, and we, you know, we really kind of said, you know what, this authentic nature, this quality that we want our guests to come into this world in, there's nothing that will take you out of out of story. When you enter into, you know, Galaxy's Edge, you're there, right? There's not one thing that tells me I'm in a theme park or I'm in Central Florida or I'm in Anaheim, California. I journeyed to this place. Um, so that, that was, those conversations were fantastic. Um, and just talking about the details, I want to share, this is my favorite photo. It, it, it's a weird photo. It makes no sense to most people, but let me tell you why we, why we go to these places and we do what we do. So this next photo is a picture of a wall. Now, when we were taking a picture of this wall, there's like five of us lined up there, a couple of people from Doug's team and my, you know, our team were there. And we're taking a picture of this wall and like doorknobs and you know, hinges. Right behind us is this amazing temple, you know, or um, <laughs> a palace, right? And then you know, our guide is like, 
do you want to take a picture of the palace? Like, the palace is right here. Like, no, 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 we'd rather take the picture of the dirty wall. Like, just give us five minutes. Really far. <laughs> and he could not get it in his head why we wanted to go down the darkest alley, the weirdest place. We didn't want to go to any of the normal places. And it took him like three or four days, and he finds like, oh, okay, I, I think I get it. I know the places that take you that will, will be benefit, beneficial. And as much as I tease him about going on exotic trips, those photo reference, that, that photo reference that they bring back from those trips, and then that inspires concept renderings and drawings that we do, and that inspires more detailed drawings that we do as we create this place and we finalize the design. And you're probably not surprised, it takes a couple of people to build one of these. And um, as you build the team and, get more, and bring more and more people on this journey with you, you have to quickly get the same vocabulary. And these images, are, are incredibly important for that, so people can immediately get go, oh, I get what you're trying to get at. I get what you're, I get what that place feels like. I get what this place is about and what it is we're trying to create and how we're gonna tell that story. And whether it's a plaster person or a graphics person. Or and now, you know, these next couple of images, this image, you know, if, you know, if you've seen some of our reference images of the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul, it is taken exactly, the proportions of that space is taken exactly from that space in Istanbul. But when we move into this next image and we go deeper into the market, it, it transitions to a lot of our reference photos from Morocco. So now you're seeing this image, this rendering, and you've seen the photos. You can see how they relate, how the artists and designers take those, those spaces that they've been uh, you know, witnessed in person and bring them to life. They give them that Star Wars quality and feel. Add that Ralph McQuarrie kind of you know, overlay to it. One of the images I want to share with you, and we haven't really talked a lot about this, is, okay, how is our merchandise team, you know, how, are the, how is our merchandise an extension of the store? So we're going to share one of our, our, one of our shops tonight, which is our toy shop. Big Star Wars fan. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I love toys. I'm sure all of you love toys. Um, but what's going to be unique about this is our toy shop um, actually has a proprietor. It's a toy Darian. Um, so if you remember Watto from the prequels, uh, but it's a her, it's a she. Um, and she's a, an artisan who makes toys. And I like to say this is like Space Ed. Right? That the things that you find in this shop are handmade, they're handcrafted. You can only find them on this planet, in this place. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So you're saying that the merchandise that we're going to get on Batu is only available on Batu because we come with a toy making toy dairy. Right. And she is making in universe merchandise that Absolutely. you can purchase. Yes. Uh, just so she'll be fluttering. Merchandise that is reflected of the Star Wars universe, in the Star Wars universe. Yes. And, wow. and, and as, I think as a, I mean, it, once again, authenticity, you are there. So that was really, really important to us. And I think this next image is just, a, you know, this is one of the things that you might be able to buy in this, oh. in this shop. And you can see how it looks like it's been hammered out of pieces of metal and the rivets have been set. So, um, you know, we're excited. I think our merchandise team has done an amazing job crafting uh, these extensions to the universe that will be available. And I got one last image to share. So Scott and I, you know, we've all, we've, we've, we've seen Blue Milk. Um, as of last night, we've all seen green milk. Now, uh, you know, okay, um, I still try it. You know, Luke was, Luke was up for it. If it's good enough for Luke, it's good enough for us. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I like to think about it. So, um, Scott and I got a chance to meet with our food and beverage team, and we spent a good afternoon trying several blue and green milk um, recipes. Um, <laughs> And we can't wait 2019, you're going to love it. Um, so, um, we're thinking about a different style of service, though. For very time. different, yeah. very different. <laughs> Although, I will be honest with you, Skeleton, I did pitch it. I did pitch <laughs> the green mill. Be very yeah. authenticity, come on. This is, this is where that split in reality. Yeah, this is, this is where Robin speaks up and like, um, Chris, you're out of your mind. Anyway. <laughs> Just so, there's just so many details that you're covering. I mean, that's the thing that, that just really struck me when I came to visit you guys, and that we really wanted to share this evening. And I mean, so many details, not just in the ships and the experiences, but the small details as well, but also the stories, the, the world that you're creating. Um, you, know, you, have, you have something else that you wanted to share. So. Yeah, you know, I'm just happy to share all of this with you. I mean, I think we all are, because, you know, again, we're doing this, you know, we're fans, but we're also doing this for the fans. So it's right. so important to us to get it right, and it's really, really, really fun for us to be able to share these details with you. And yeah, we do, there's so many great stories that are gonna happen in this place, and experiences for you, and characters to meet, and adventures to set off on. You know, and, and yes, 2019 is still a little far away, but we do want to start to plant those seeds with all of you today. You know, Chris talked about his love for toys, and you did as well, and you know, toys and, toys and that kind of 
Um, merchandise has been a part of Star Wars since day one. But you know what else has been a part of Star Wars since day one? Trading cards. Mm -hmm. So yeah. tonight, I'm proud to unveil to all of you and announce that we are actually starting as a, uh, a series of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge trading cards. And this will be a great way for us to start to plant the seeds and introduce you to the characters and some of the, the backstories and some of the mysteries that happen on this planet. Does everybody like these trading card ideas? Is this a good idea? Okay, well, um, and really happy to share that all of you are gonna get the inaugural set tonight. I hope you guys really like these, because you guys are going to be the first to, to get these. Not here in the theater tonight, but on your way out of the park, when you're actually leaving the park tonight, you'll be giving a set of these. And I will tell you, there are some, in, there are some secrets inside some of these. Some of these packs. So each and every one of you will get this brand new uh, pr preliminary, I mean, this is like the very, very first run. I, literally, Rachel got these from the UPS like today. <laughs> Not as you're exiting the theater, but as you leave the park this evening, you will be getting these trading cards from Razoo. That is just amazing. Yeah, we just can't wait to share more information with you guys as uh, as we get closer to uh, launching this th this planet and inviting you to step onto it. Where can people go if they want to find out more? Oh, there it is. Yeah, a great, uh, actually, yeah, DisneyParksBlog.com uh, slash Star Wars is a great place. We, we always put the latest and greatest of what's happening. In, in the world of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge on the blog there. So we invite you to come back and check it out often. Well listen, on behalf of everyone in the audience, I just want to thank you all for taking the time and sharing the sneak peek of where you are right now. This is incredible. Thank you so much. Please join me in giving a round of applause.